All right, so this is quick tip number three with importing a .fbx file. Uh, one of the common problems that you'll have in some cases, I'm going to go ahead and open up this FBX file. And it was a model I converted. And normal conversion process, I'm going to hit import. And I don't see it right there. OK, so that's cool. If I scroll way out, the model, there it is. OK, and you can see where it starts to disappear into the background. And this is a common clipping plane problem that you have to always be aware of when dealing with FBX files. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that in the outliner. And you can see I have the whole object there. But what we really have to do here in this case is choose our perspective camera and come over into the channel box. And we need to increase that far clipping plane by just adding a zero into here. And when I do that, you can see where the, the model shows up. And we have a little bit more room to work with now. I can see the grid way down here. OK, so in, in world space, this model is sitting out here. You know, just it, it's unworkable out here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my wireframes there. And you can see that the model also is kind of kind of whacked. <laughs> we got wheels coming in over here. We got a wheel coming in over here and all of that. So let's take care of the obvious problems first. Let's get it centered on the grid. So by increasing that clipping plane, we now have room to work. So I'm going to choose the object overall in the outliner. And we're going to just basically scale this thing down. And I'm going to go scale, scale, scale. But you can see it's scaling from up here and not down here by the grid. Well, if I come over into the, the channel box again, take a look at this Y value. You can see we're, you know, we're, we're set at, at X at 0 and, and negative 0, actually. And this Y value is 3,782. Well, that's just plain wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in here and just hit 0. And that should bring it down and center it on the grid. So now it's just a matter of scaling this. And you could scale it from, from here if you want to try and mess with your scale values. But let's just do it manually. I'm going to click on my, my scale tool there. And we're just going to scale this down a bit. Hit F on the keyboard. That'll focus it on the object. So I'm just going to keep scaling it down. Hit F on the keyboard. And at some point, it's going to sort of look right on the grid. OK, well, I'm going to work with it there at, at this point now. And we're going to sort of fix what's wrong with this model. And there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. First of all, it's rotational values and pivot points. Um, these wheels should be on the axles, so that's kind of obvious. But let's take a look at this wheel right here. When I click on that wheel, according to this model, you know, the, the pivot point is set out here. And we don't want that pivot point coming from right there for this wheel. So an easy thing to do would just be to come into Modify and Modify Center Pivot. And now that center pivot is sort of centered on that wheel. So when we want to rotate it and everything, it, it should look pretty good. But you'll notice, too, that this wheel, it, it sort of is facing the wrong way. It should be facing the opposite way because it's going on the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to rotate it. So I'll choose my Rotate tool. And watch the box up here, our channel box um, up here. As I move this around, I want to rotate it to, oh, you know, all the way around until it's about on the other side. And here, it's the Y value that we're messing with. So let's just go ahead and hit negative 90 on there. And that pretty, pretty safely gives us a, a wheel that's correct. Now I can go ahead and click on my Move tool and move it over here and move it into place. And if I select the other wheel at the same time and get our view there, I can kind of get a, nope, don't want to do them both because we had them both selected. So I'm going to hit Edit, Undo. And now I just want to select this wheel and sort of move it into the same positioning as what we have going on over at this wheel. All right. So there's that one. OK, so we have that. Now let's look at the back wheels. Um, obviously, the same thing's probably going to have to happen back here because this wheel is going to go on the outside. I want to go ahead and choose my rotate tool. But before I do that, I want to look at where that center pivot is. Center pivot for this wheel is down in here, and we really don't want that. So we'll go back up into our menu and come down and go to center pivot. And now we can rotate that safely by just giving it a 
a turn like this. Now, depending on where this is set at, this value should be probably at negative 90. So I'm going to set that at negative 90. And I'm going to go ahead and move it. I'm going to choose my move tool and just move it to the other side for the moment. Then I want to take a look at this wheel and it's the inner wheel so we can kind of look at it like well you know what do we want to do with that um, in this case we could we could do either we could we could reset the pivot point which we might as well do let's reset that center pivot and let's rotate that as well so we'll give this a rotation and we're rotating it on its y-axis and we want to go to negative 90 so I'm going to firm it up in here by just typing in negative 90. Okay, now we got that, and I'm going to move that over into position as well. So if I zoom in on the back, that kind of is about right. I don't know, you know, just you be the judge, but this is just something that's going to happen to you all the time. Okay, so I'm going to bring that wheel in, and we can look at it from a couple of different angles and eyeball it and just sort of you know, just sort of bring those wheels into position where where they look right, kind of look right. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to focus on that a little bit. And we'll bring those out a little. I don't know, you be, be the judge. But that's one common thing that's going to happen. But by resetting those center pivot points, you'll notice now that when you choose one of these wheels and say you wanted to animate this wheel, you could go ahead and animate it and it would be, you know, correct in position for, you know, spinning. <laughs> okay? So that's just one wonky thing or another wonky thing that's going to happen when you import these .fbx files and especially with, with wheels and things like that. So be careful you pay attention to that. Now, once we get everything set up here, let's take another look at another problem with this. I noticed that this mirror up here is it's sort of just a duplicate of the other side and a lot of this happens I think when when it's created in another program like um, 3ds max or something and it's you know basically a mirrored geometry or something I, I don't know but anyway you could work all day at trying to fix that but I doubt you're gonna be able to so in this case I might go for an easy quick fix and I might just turn it around like that and I might uh, just sort of move it kind of move it into position somewhere where it might look right. So either way, um, you know, you, you're going to be messing around with little things like that. So be aware of where your model parts are. And now when I come over into the outliner, I can go ahead and select the whole object. And what I want to do is make sure I set my, my values right here that I, I freeze my transformations. So I'm going to come up into modify and freeze the transformations and now I have a scale value of 1 and everything is set at um, 0 on all of the translation and rotational values so that's cool now taking a look at this model there's lots of different options for texturing in here it is a very detailed model which is kinda nice because each one of these has its own um, own material assigned to it and we can uh, we can start concentrating on texturing from here. So anyway, that's just a way to take care of a problem with, um, you know, center pivots and things like that on a model that comes in on an FBX. So, all right, great. Hope you learned something. And thanks for watching. Read a book and be a good person. Okay.